Hi there folks, my name is Mike, and in this series I'm going to be talking about SDL2, the Simple Direct Media Layer. Now, what is SDL2? Why should you care about it? Well, SDL2 is popularly used by a lot of application developers for games, multimedia applications, and so on. And what it provides is an API for you to do video processing and handling things like OpenGL, DirectX, as far as setting up the window, as well as keyboard input, joystick input, processing audio, and even some more advanced features like handling threads and timers. So with that said, let me give you a little overview of SDL. Then I'm going to show you how to set up an SDL program specifically in Linux. And then I'll follow up with a few other tutorials after this one for various platforms like Windows and Mac. So let's go ahead and dive in and just refresh a little bit on what SDL is. So here's what SDL looks like and the website. So you can Google SDL2 and find it. And it'll give you a little bit of an uh, overview of the tool here. Now, one of the things that I'll say that I like about SDL2 is that it's proven commercially. That means it's been used in industry as well as professional applications, for game developers, or things that are actually have been used. And I think that's important when choosing a library. The library itself is also what we would say stable in the sense that the application binary interface would be stable and it's not really going to change under your feet. So that's definitely a good thing. And one of the things that I'm going to highlight here that's important with STL is its platform support for Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iOS. And there's also been some support in previous versions for our consoles. So you can rest assured that learning this tool will be useful, especially if you're trying to develop a multi platform. So getting acquainted with the website will be useful for you as you learn SDL. As you can tell, again, SDL is a C library, and it works with languages like C++, which is what I'm going to be using in this series here. That said, if you use other languages like C Sharp or Python, there's many different bindings available, which you can find here for pretty much every language uh, that you would be using in development. And if it's not listed here, likely there's some alternative binding to it, as long as you can interface with the C language. So from here, you can go to the wiki page and you'll find the front page here. And again, just looking at the what is SDL, you can find some more of the information here, introduction, and even the source code for SDL. Again, I think this is an important part when choosing a library if you have access to the source code so you can see how things work, especially as you become a more advanced user. So with that said, I think that's enough of an introduction and let's go ahead and get to the coding portion of SDL. So for this portion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write all of my code in a GitHub repository so that you can take a look at this public repository here. Let me go ahead and clone this repo and set up our first uh, SDL report. So I'm going to shift here and open a terminal window. And let me make this a little bit bigger for you folks so you can see. And let's go ahead and clone that repository. OK, so clone the repository, and let me go ahead and navigate into it. And I'm going to split my window so we can see what's going on here and make it just a little bit smaller here. Now, my goal here is not going to be to show you how to initialize SDL on every possible platform. That's going to be in a follow up to this series of videos. But let's just go ahead and get started with creating a simple SDL window so that we know it's on our system. So I'm going to be demonstrating this on Linux system. If you want to follow along with this first tutorial before I introduce a specific tutorial on just setup, you may need to install the SDL library. So lib sdl2 dev like this. And you'll need to enter your password and so on. Now I've already got one of the latest versions of SDL 2.08. There might be a newer version by the time you watch this, and that's okay. The same techniques will apply. Now, what I want to explain here is we're going to be compiling software, an SDL program that's taking advantage of the SDL library. So let's just understand how that works on the command line before we actually write our program, uh, just so you can understand again how C and C++ programs link in other libraries to achieve the task of drawing an SDL to a window, which you might use for, say, a graphics or multimedia application. So the basic idea here is that you're going to have some sort of 
source code that you write here. And this is going to be us in our main.cpp. And what we want to make available is some other library here, such as sdl.h. And this is the interface that we're going to add into our file here. And what this header does is says, hey, there's going to be a bunch of functions available, things like sdl underscore init for initializing the library. And when we include that in our main file here, which I'll just type include here, where we'll put in the SDL, that makes those functions available. However, since C and C++, which I'm going to be demonstrating these tutorials in, is a compiled language, we need to be able to link in the object code, which means our SDL library here, whether that's in the form of a .lib, or depending on your platform, a DLL or a dilib, that also needs to be linked in during the compilation process. If you need some help understanding the compilation process, I'll link a video that will be useful for that as well. So that's what we're going to achieve in two steps. First, writing the main.cpp so that we have our SDL program, which includes the SDL library, and then we'll link it all together to create our executable and make sure that SDL2 is. So let's go ahead and dive in and do that. All right, so I'll switch away from this drawing here, and we'll go ahead and write our first SDL program here. I'm just going to write it in the main file, and let's go ahead and progressively build this up. So I'm going to have my main function here that I have in all of my C++ programs. I might include a library here for output later that may be useful for us. And importantly, I'm going to need to include the SDL library sdl.h. And I'll talk about how to include or link this in, but let's go ahead and just label these separately as C++ standard libraries and SDL, which is our third party library here. Okay, and I'm also going to take in any arguments uh, as we might have for our program. Okay, so in order to initialize SDL, we have a function here, sdl underscore init. So let's go ahead and call this function here just to see if SDL has been properly initialized. And a common way to do this is to go ahead and check within if SDL init and the particular subsystem that you want to initialize, video for instance, and make sure that it doesn't return some error code which would be less than zero. And I'll pop in in a moment here just to show you where in the documentation you can find this for the initialization. And my goal is to just show you how to set up or confirm that SDL is working for your desired platform. Okay, so if we get some error here, what we'd want to say is write out a message here. The out SDL could not be initialized. And we can actually get an error code from this as well. I'll go ahead and just append this here. SDL error, excuse me, SDL get error. And that should retrieve us an error code that can help us debug if something went wrong. Otherwise, if this successfully worked, let's just go ahead and print out a message that says SDL video system is ready to go. And put a little end line here. I'm going to assume that most of the folks who are watching this are interested in doing some sort of graphics, multimedia, gaming application uh, in this series. So you'll need the video system. But in the same way, we can also set up with the various bit flags, the audio system, or other subsystems that SDL uh, has available. The nice thing is you only have to pay for or initialize the systems that you need in SDL. So with that said, let's go ahead and save this file and try to compile it. And again, I'm going to show you this in a few ways. So we have our main file here. Now if I just try to use G++, and let's use a sort of modern version of C++ here, and compile our file and output prog, we're gonna get a few messages here. It's gonna say sdl.h, no file or directory. So at this point, you might get a little bit frustrated, but again, depending on where the SDL header file was installed, 
it might be in some directory such as uh, sdl2 here. sdl2 slash sdl.8. So let's go ahead and try to recompile this. And now I'm going to get another error here that's saying undefined reference to these functions. So I've successfully found our header file, which means, hey, we know these functions exist. Again, a header file is sort of like the interface or telling us what's available. But whenever you get one of these errors here, this is a linker error. We haven't included the SDL library at this point. So we need to now do that in our compilation. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that. And in order to link the SDL library, the library that I need to link is dash L SDL2. So simple as that. So let's go ahead and try one more time. Hit enter. And this time, if I run it, let's go ahead and try to run our program. And it says SDL video system is ready to go. So we at least know that we've successfully found our header files here in some system path and that we've been able to successfully run the program. Now, occasionally you might see other folks link in other libraries uh, more explicitly, depending on your compiler, where you need to, uh, since SDL is being dynamically linked in, add in the uh, dynamic linking library here. Um, so on occasion, you might see me do that as well. Um, but you should just be able to get away with, uh, on this Linux system, doing load SDL2 or linking in the SDL2 library. Now, the one place that I want to circle back to is the documentation. So how to sort of get started with SDL. And what we can do is go back here, and the introduction is pretty good, talking about what SDL can do, uh, how to get various support, again, what libraries are available, and so on. And I really strongly recommend that people that are watching this are using the more modern version of 2.0, unless you have a specific reason to go back to 1.0. There's a decent set of tutorials here um, as well. So the wiki uh, itself has a pretty good search functionality so that you can look up specific SDL functions as well. So if you want to know exactly what that SDL init function is doing, you can look it up. So typically, I'm going to do this in most cases is I'm going to uh, either, either go to the index here, which is going to have all the pages, type in SDL init for a specific function, and then I can find out exactly how this command works. Uh, and usually there is a supporting example as well. Or you could also do the search here, which is useful from the SDL wiki page, or of course, good old Google search usually does the trick. So with that said, that's getting set up a little bit of an introduction to what SDL is. And we'll have some resources uh, linked as well as follow up tutorials on specific platforms that you might be using SDL.